before I begin today's video, I'll just go ahead and shout out two people who I happen to notice on Instagram who are celebrating their first diversary. Their diversary is their first year, uh, marking one year living with type 1 diabetes. So diabetes underscore teen 05 is celebrating her first diversary as well as underscore, underscore Cameron McCloskey. So happy diversary to both of you ladies. Um, you're on one heck of a journey with all the rest of us, but I just wanted to give you a shout out and one of you is very, very uh, pleased with my videos and enjoys watching them, so thank you so much for that wonderful comment. So anyways, with that being said, let's jump right in to today's video. Hey everyone, it's Maddie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And um, I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for 2,000 subscribers. I woke up on the very first day of 2021 and my channel surpassed 2,000 subscribers and to me again I'm mind blown by how many people really find this channel helpful and are engaged with me and really enjoy learning all the different aspects uh, of my diabetes life so I'm gonna go ahead and quick do an, another introduction I try to do these like every maybe 10 to 15 videos just so that any new subscribers or people who are new to my channel can get an idea of who I am so if you are new to my channel or a new subscriber welcome my name is Maddie I've been living with type 1 diabetes for nearly three years. It will be three years this coming July. And I use the Dexcom G6, which is a continuous glucose monitor. I've had that for uh, over two years now um, to check my blood sugar. I did multiple daily injections for the first 10 months. And then I went to the Omnipod Dash and was on that from May of 2019 until September of 2020. And found out it really wasn't the pump for me. And again, look forward to future videos explaining why I switched. Um, and then for two months, from September to November, I did multiple daily injections again. Instead of using Lantus, I used Levomir as my long-acting. So again, look forward to a video about me talking about Levomir and why I liked it a lot more than Lantus for my body. And then on November 23rd, 2020, I started on the Tandem T-Slim X2 pump with Control IQ. So basically, it kind of is almost like an artificial pancreas in a way where it'll kind of regulate your blood sugars based upon where your trends are. So anyways, today's video is more for you Tandem users or for any of you thinking about going to a Tandem T-Slim pump. Thanks to Kelly, I was able to try an AutoSoft 30 um, infusion set. Uh, now keep in mind when I was sent the supplies for my insulin pump, I told you guys I got the AutoSoft 90. Now technically speaking, I have the AutoSoft XC. Now, an AutoSoft XC is basically the same thing as an AutoSoft 90 because the degree insertion is 90 degrees. However, the AutoSoft XC is a little bit different in the way that the, it grips onto the actual infusion set. So it's a little bit easier to detach and hang on to versus an AutoSoft 90. It's a little slipperier on the actual set that goes inside your body. Um, and again, maybe I'll look at that a little bit more in detail and kind of explain the difference between XC and 90. There really isn't much other than the name and the way it slides in and the way you're able to grip onto the actual infusion set. So as always, before I start any of my videos, this is, you know, not saying you have to go to a tandem pump, you have to do this, you have to try that. This is simply what I've been able to try and I'm going to share my experiences in hopes to help others maybe find the right infusion set for them. Um, so don't take any of my stuff as sole medical advice. Always consult your doctor or your physician or try things on your own. Do not do things on my accord because what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So now that we have all that out of the way, I will go ahead and start comparing an AutoSoft 90 to an AutoSoft 30. So I have a list here and I have kind of the differences, pros and cons, and you'll kind of be able to tell what's the pro and con after I kind of say what things happen. And then I also have some items here I can actually show you what they look like. I did save my AutoSoft 30 infusion set and just kind of show you what it looked like. So I had the pleasure of trying the AutoSoft 30 again, thanks to Kelly. I placed it on my thigh um, just to kind of give my abdomen a break. Until I can get some longer tubing, I'm avoiding my arms, even though they work tremendously well for my blood sugars. Thighs were always hit or miss for me, even on the Omnipod. So I thought I'd give them a try again. It took a little bit for my body to get used to having it on my thigh again. There was definitely some, you know, for me, I noticed with the thigh sites, I definitely cannot eat super starchy foods. It just absorbs slower. So I know if I'm eating something super sugary, I take an injection for it. But for like a thigh, like a thigh site for basal insulin, for basic meals, you know, not super high carb starchy things, I can bolus accordingly and get pretty decent blood sugars. 
So I put it on my left thigh and everything went fine and dandy, you know, it was great. The next morning I found a little bit of blood in the actual site when I was actually um, getting up in the morning and I think maybe I rolled on it. Um, and I'm thinking, oh crap, you know, is this going to really affect absorption? Is it going to, you know, block the cannula housing where no insulin is going to get through? So I didn't rip it off right away. I just, I just kept it on and I waited a little bit. The site wasn't painful. Um, insulin wasn't back leaking. The cannula didn't pull out. So I just kind of kept going in. Um, I'm kind of glad I did because the site, you can see where the blood actually was, was actually where the insertion site was. It wasn't actually where the cannula was. So this is the 30 degree cannula. You can see there's no blood, no bends, no kinks, no damage done from the actual blood itself that I um, put it into. Maybe I put it in a little bit of a capillary and I rolled on it at night or something of the sorts where I ended up with a little bit of blood in the infusion set. So um, I just kept it running and it worked totally fine. Um, and I'm very glad I did the Autosoft 30 on my thigh. I'm currently trying the Autosoft XC or a 90 degree insertion site on my thigh. And it's okay. I think I prefer the more angled insertion sites on my thighs and I don't know if any of you feel the same way but um, I think from now on if I'm going to do any more thigh sites I'm going to use a 30 degree insertion site or an angled set just because I think it is a lot better for me. So let's get into the differences a little bit um, between a 30 degree and a 90 degree. So a 30 degree infusion set it just talks about the degree of insertion it's going into. So 30 degrees meaning 30 degrees at the angle of your skin. So if your skin is here 30 degrees is approximately sitting like that. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Omnipod was a little bit more aggressive. They were actually at a 45. Um, and then a 90 degree looks like this. It's straight into the body. So um, that's the difference between like a, when they say 30 and 90. It's like the actual degree to which it inserts into your skin. Uh, 90 degree, like I said, is like this. If this is your skin, this is the cannula. 30 degree is this is the skin. This is the cannula. Omnipod's more at like a 45-ish degree angle. So that is what they mean by the actual names themselves. Um, <clears throat> the, may, the first difference I noticed with the 30 degree versus the 90 degree instantly was the length of the cannula. Um, and you can kind of tell the inserter needle is a little bit longer when you actually go to place a 30 degree versus a 90 degree. This cannula, um, I will try to get exact specs and put them up here, but this cannula to me looks like it's at least 15 millimeters um, at minimum because um, a centimeter is 10 millimeters and this to me looks a little bit longer than 10 millimeters it looks more like a centimeter and a half so I would say that this is a 15 millimeter cannula whereas the Autosoft 90 that I use I believe they can come in six or nine millimeter sites I use the six millimeter site so if you want to imagine what a six millimeter site would look like it would look approximately like that so it's quite a bit shorter um, and again, I think it, it's because of the way it's going into your skin. So um, because the Autosoft 30 has to go in at an angle, in order to get to that subcutaneous tissue, it has to have a little bit longer of a cannula to drive beneath the skin and go into that kind of fatty tissue. Whereas a 90 degree is going straight, penetrating straight through the skin, so you don't need quite as long of a length to get to that sub-Q tissue, if that makes sense. So the fill for the cannula is a little bit different. Now, I'm going to talk about this that I've had. A little bit of trouble with troubleshooting with the tandem with the 90 degree but you have to fill the cannula for a 30 degree at 0.7 units so meaning when you have everything hooked up to your body it says fill your cannula this cannula needs uh, approximately just a little under a unit to fill the cannula itself so that you can continuously get basal insulin because the cannula length on a uh, autosoft 90 is a little bit shorter you only need 0.3 units However, I, like I said, I'm going to talk about more of a troubleshooting thing. Um, I find it better to prime my 90 degree 6 millimeter sets with a 0 0.7, just like a 30 degree. Um, I've been having a little bit of problems with like thinking my sights were bad and it wasn't they were bent. It was there was air like very like one minuscule air bubble locked into the actual cannula and there was no blood. There was nothing wrong with the sight. So I was basically feeding myself air for the first part of my uh, infusion sets. Now I find that if I prime the cannula more or I give myself like a unit to a unit and a half bolus after I change my insulin pump, I don't have that problem. So in essence, I'm pushing that arrow and then allowing kind of that um, basal delivery to resume at a more normal level. So one of the things that I like the most about the 30 degree versus the 90 
is that you can see the cannula under your skin, sort of. I mean, it, you can't fully see the part that's underneath sub Q, but when you insert it, and if you look, you have this little kind of window. It's kind of like the Omnipod. You see this little bit of a lump right here? You can see probably, oh, the first, you know, two thirds of the actual cannula. The remaining other piece is completely invisible, uh, invisible to you. So what I like about this is if you notice that something's bent, something's leaking, something doesn't look right, you can pretty much see if there's a problem with your cannula. Whereas with an Autosoft 90, once it's inserted into your body, the only there's only a couple ways you can tell there's something wrong with your site. Number one, your blood sugar is still super high. Um, number two, if you look into the little window and you see kind of like something hanging out a little bit more, the Autosoft 90, you should see like a circle with the actual infusion set and it should be flush with your skin. A couple times when I've had bent cannulas, I've actually been able to see just a little piece of that cannula kind of bent a little bit underneath the skin. Um, and then your other third cue with the, the 90 degree that there's something definitely wrong is if you give insulin and all of a sudden you're seeing droplets underneath like the cannula housing or you're seeing droplets on the actual adhesive, then you know insulin's back leaking out of your body and you're not getting uh, your appropriate amount of insulin for either your food or your basal. So that is like the best thing that I probably loved about the 30 degree is just being able to see that cannula. That is like a huge thing, like to be able to tell, hey, you know, is it bent? Is there insulin back leaking? And then in my circumstance, there was blood. Um, but because the blood was at the very, very back of the cannula and it wasn't totally encompassing the entire window and there wasn't blood anywhere else around my cannula or insertion site, I kept it on and just kind of said, okay, let's see what happens here. Because I'd put that site on literally the night before, I'm like, I don't want to rip this off. I'm kind of doing an experiment for you guys, so let's just see what happens. Um, and if it was the case that the cannula became bent or completely clogged off with blood, um, basal insulin would not have been adequately been able to be delivered to me, so my blood sugars would have been like sky high continuously with the 30 degree. So that is like the biggest benefit with the 30 degree versus the 90. The other big benefit that I absolutely love and that you um, what prompted Kelly to give me this is twice I've had bent cannulas with 90 degrees. I put them in as like bent blood sugar goes like 500 and you're like, ah, no, 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 no. Um, so you are much less likely to have bends underneath your skin or the cannulas to actually kink with the 30 degree. Um, cause if you can only imagine the way it's inserting to your skin, it, it kind of has to go. It's like an airplane. It's, it lands kind of nicely and goes underneath your skin. Or if you imagine a 90 degree thing, or like if you fall off a building and these are your feet and you go in there, there's there's a chance of this, 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 and this to roll around and bend the cannula. So that's kind of how I picture it. So when you go to insert like a 90 degree, there's a couple tips that I found that really can ensure that you're not going to bend the cannula from human error. Um, you always got to make sure you pull that inserter needle out completely straight. Any like bend or twist with the way you're rocking off the insertion site can instantly bend that cannula, even just the littlest bit totally stop your insulin delivery. Um, whereas with the AutoSelf 90, you have more likely of a chance for bending. So that is a huge benefit to the 30 degree. Now this could be taken as a pro or a con. Um, the, the 30 degree definitely is a larger patch to wear on your body. Um, if you compare it to my actual like length of my thumb, it's almost the length of my thumb. Uh, an AutoSelf 90 goes only maybe about an inch by an inch. It's pretty tiny. So these are a little bit more there if you wear them in a site that people can see them. Um, but they do, to me, sit a little bit more flush to the skin. Again, because see how this is tapered at an angle? It's going to sit a little bit more flush with the skin versus Autosoft 90 where it's completely able to be seen. And then the actual housing sticks out, you know, not super far, but far enough. So the Autosoft 30, in my opinion, is definitely larger. The length of the adhesive, all of that stuff compared to the Autosoft 90, which is much smaller. Um, with the AutoSoft 30, um, I actually kind of like this to a certain degree. Um, you insert your insertion site and then the tubing comes in an actual separate kind of little baggy. I'll insert a picture here of what it looks like to have a AutoSoft 30 insertion site, like what you need to set it up versus like an AutoSoft 90. So what I mean by that is you put the insertion site on and then you go through and hook your tubing up to the cartridge, to the pump, and then run it through, and then connect yourself to the site, then front fill your cannula, and then go. With an AutoSoft 90, because it's kind of in that little portal, when you uh, pull back on the device to actually insert the cannula under your skin, 
that infusion set or that clip and that tubing is all housed in there for you. It's all in one little set. So it's more convenient than the AutoSoft 90. However, that's where I think there's a lot of problems that can happen. If something gets bent in the meantime, tubing gets twisted, air gets stuck. I feel like there's a little bit more, for the convenience part of it, you're getting a little bit more of a chance to have error. Um, you know, but it is convenient to have everything wrapped up into one and it's less garbage waste to have everything in plastic. So again, um, you have to insert then connect, whereas when you insert your insertion site for a 90 degree, everything is all connected and the insertion site's already inserted and, and clipped together uh, for you. So it's all connected at once. Again, that just kind of goes with how the actual set looks. Um, again, I'll put pictures as you probably can see. The AutoSoft 30 is more of an oblong shaped infusion set, whereas the AutoSoft 90 is a much rounder pod. Um, so because of the way that, again, it has to go into you, the AutoSoft 30 has more like, they call them little legs, but they look like skis. They literally sit like this against your skin so that it forces the cannula to go under your skin, whereas the AutoSoft 90 is a bulked pod so that you place it on there and squeeze and then it forces the cannula inside. So um, you got like more of an oblong shape versus a, a round shape. The oblong shape is a little harder to hold on to, I'll admit, but as far as like the actual like gripping, squeezing, it's all about the same as far as like that kind as of stuff. As far as the actual shower plug, what I do like is on each individual set with the AutoSoft 30, they come with an individual shower plug and it's a lot wider um, and it's more difficult to get out than this one. And again, this is the XC. You can see the grips are a little bit different. Um, it's actually a little bit more easy to grip versus this one. But you can see the shower cap for the actual 30 degree is significantly larger than the uh, AutoSoft 90. Um, and then I did say my tubing and my cartridge here. This is what the 30 degree set looks like hooked up to a cartridge. Again, it's pretty large and I think it was a little bit more difficult to put in and take out um, than the other one. Now I have an AutoSoft 90 on my body, but I have clean tubing here that I haven't used. Um, again, I'll talk more about what, what do you mean by this clean tubing, but um, this is what the size looks like as far as the actual 90 degree. Let me see if I can. And both of these, I believe, are 23 inches. I'm, I didn't look to see if she gave me anything longer. Yep. I got this one right. Cool beans. Like I said, I'm going to look into getting some longer tubing just so I can do my arms. Um, but I've definitely found that I like a variety of different infusion sets versus just one that I was given. The adhesive to me was about the same as far as it being able to stick. Um, I've not had issues with either one peeling up, so that's amazing. Um, I do notice sometimes when I insert my sights, I do get more of a like red reaction and it'll kind of go away, like almost like my skin kind of flares up from having something inside my body. So, um, but no uh, differences in adhesives. Pain level, as far as I would say for insertion, they're both about the same, but honestly, this one will intimidate you a little bit more just because the, the cannula is longer and the inserter needle, once you pull everything apart and look at it, is much longer and it's a lot bigger of a thing to actually hold and, you know, place correctly. But honestly, I found that the AutoSoft 30 is less painful than the 90. I, that's just me. Like, I've had more pinching and, you know, not like it's super painful. Most of the time it's painless, but like I've definitely had more pinching problems than the one time I've dealt with this. So um, I would say for comfort, a 30 probably would be a little bit more comfortable for me uh, personally. Now, why would somebody use a 30 degree versus a 90 degree? Now, it depends on how way your body absorbs, but it really depends on how your body is laid out with subcutaneous tissue or fat tissue. Um, I definitely foresee myself using these more in the future because number one, I am not a very big person. Therefore, the amount of fat on my body is pretty Minimal minus my abdomen has really the most fat. Um, but if I wanted to use sites like my arm, my leg, using a, a, a you know, 30 degree or an angled infusion set would be a lot better for me just because it's going to access that sub Q tissue a little bit better. Versus an AutoSoft 90, I think they work a little bit better in areas where there's more fat because it doesn't have to go quite as deep to get into there and get everything. So I feel like, you know, for more areas in your body that have more fat it would work a lot better. Now, like I said, I'm trying it on my thigh and it's not the worst, but it's certainly not as good as a 30 degree. And like I said, I have a lot of variation with my thighs, unfortunately. And then now I'm pairing it up with, you know, my monthly problems now. So that, that this doesn't, not a good combo. 
not saying that my blood sugars are god awful like they were on the Omnipod, but I've had a couple times where I went like, oh, hello, 230, and go right back down. Oh, hi, 250, and, you know, go back down. But overall, I, I'm definitely glad I tried the 30 so that I know, like, if I want to use my thighs or my arms or, like, give other areas a break that aren't, aren't as hefty in subcutaneous tissue, I can absolutely go ahead and do so. Um, I will be looking into this more. I'm getting some 30s with, from my supplier as well as 90s, so I have a nice variety to kind of choose from. But overall, both are good sites. I don't really have, like I said, I honestly, I've just had a couple issues with bending with the Autosoft 90. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty great. Um, both sites work good, and this one is the first one I've had blood in, but again, because I think I laid on it, may have been the reason why. You know, and, and again, I put it in a sub-Q area where it was definitely more squishy, fatty, can be pinched with your finger. But still, you can kind of hit more of those vascular areas in your body and kind of have a little bit of bleeding. So like I said, overall, both really, really good sites. If I had to choose, however, if I had to choose just one site that I had to go with strictly, like if I couldn't go with a 90 or a 30, I would probably have to go with the 30 just because I feel like the location of where I can put this is more ver versatile than where I can put a, a 90. You know, just because I am a leaner person and um, putting it a, a angled set is a lot easier for me than driving something like that that's 90 degrees. Um, I have not tried True Steel yet. I may try that. I've heard a lot of good things about True Steel. Some people have used um, like the variable length cannula ones from Tandem where they can kind of pick and choose like how deep it goes. And that's really for people too that have a lot of hypolipertrophy, meaning that they have a lot of scar tissue buildup and they need to bust past that from being diabetic for years longer than me. Or maybe they just, you know, while they were using a pump that they really didn't rotate their sights quite as often as they should have and ended up having problems. Um, I comfortably can use my abdomen anywhere, pretty much upper, lower, thighs, arms. I pretty much am pretty lucky to use it all around. Some people have even, as a female, has, have used it in their breast tissue. Unfortunately, I don't think I got enough to put anywhere near that. And it just, to me, that feels like really sensitive to like put something here. But for you ladies that have done it and tried it, let me know if it works great. I'm happy for you because if it's sub-Q tissue, you could, theoretically, as long as there's fat and there's sub-Q tissue, you can stick a needle or a cannula anywhere. So anyways, this video was pretty long, but I hope you got an idea to compare a Autosoft 30 degree versus a 90 degree. Um, and if you have questions for me, let me know. And again, thanks to Kelly for letting me try this so that I could make, and, and, and I got a video inspiration here. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm experimenting and figuring things out and then I'm able to kind of share my experiences with you. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. I post as many videos as often as I can about diabetes plus more. And until next time for another video, take care, God bless, be kind, spread positivity, and be thankful. And I hope the first few days of 2021 are treating you well. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.